My name is Kathleen Jewell, and I'm an engineer at Sourcegraph. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about how to build and run Next.js applications with Docker and Compose. Specifically, I'm going to be talking about building containers for Next.js applications and some of the things that you can think about as you compose your Docker files, how to wire up a local multi-service development setup with Compose, and some of the different options that you have when it comes to serving your site content with Next. I'm also going to spend some time talking about the different things that you can do if you work with Nginx. You can always have Nginx out in front of your Next server as a proxy, but today I'll be talking about how you can use it to serve static content. We'll look at how you can share data easily between containers in a multi-service setup with named volumes. But first, what is Next.js? Next is a React framework for building web applications. It offers different options for content rendering, data fetching, and routing. And it also gives you the flexibility to plug into the infrastructure and third-party tooling of your choice. One aspect of Next.js that has made it a popular choice among developers is its approach to content rendering. Rather than prescribe a particular mode of content rendering, Next supports multiple options out of the box. SSR, or server-side rendering, which supports server-generated pages that are pre-rendered on request. SSG, or static-side generation, where pages are rendered at build time. ISR, or incremental static regeneration, where pages can be selectively regenerated on a per request basis based on certain criteria, and CSR, or client-side rendering, where data is fetched completely on the client side. Some benefits of serving content completely statically include minimizing attack and incident vectors, Without databases or other microservices directly affecting page generation, there are just fewer questions about what is going to happen as your site runs in production or experiences heavier traffic loads. Static sites also tend to be incredibly fast, since pages don't need to be re-rendered and there's no additional trips to, say, a database. It's also easy to scale since you're basically making carbon copies of your code, which works really well in a distributed environment. Dialing up nodes becomes a very straightforward proposition. You also have lots of options for deployment. You can use a Next server, or you can do something like pull content from a CDN. Honestly, SSG works incredibly well for certain types of applications. Think static sites that don't have an internal CMS, or that don't require CRUD operations. Applications that plug into local Markdown or MDX builds, or that pull from an external D CMS or database are just great candidates for using SSG. Again, I just want to emphasize SSG is awesome, and it will honestly make a ton of sense for applications that serve static content. You can do a lot of things on top of it. There are some things, though, that can be gotchas or a little bit more complicated depending on what you're trying to achieve. Rewrites, which now work with SSG, do require another step before build time. In your next config, you need to define an export path map that maps requests to updated destinations so that that information is available at build time. This can be complicated if, for example, you have a number of records and are working with dynamic templates in a deeply nested file path project structure, you need to be able to provide all of your paths upfront in a deterministic way. The API routing feature in Next also does not work with an ex uh, export. So, for example, if you want to do something that involves handling a request or working with middleware, you're going to need to come up with another solution. 
What I'm going to be walking through today is a way that you can set up a Dockerized application stack to serve statically generated Next.js content from Nginx. We're going to use Docker volumes to share the data, and then I'm going to walk through a couple of ways that you could do A-B testing of page content based on cookies. Our stack ultimately will be composed of three services, which we have defined in a compose file, an auth backend service, a client service, and an Nginx service. The backend service, an express server, will run with two very simple endpoints, login and logout. These mimic a call that you might make to an external auth service. This is for demo purposes only. You obviously would not want to set cookies this way in real life. For our purposes though, we're gonna set a hard-coded, non-sensitive cookie to assess whether or not a user has logged into our site. We are also making it possible to read this cookie using the document cookie API by setting uh, it with the HTTP only attribute here. Again, this service is just a placeholder for a more secure workflow that you would use to authenticate your users and which would provide a token of some kind. A few things to point out here in our auth backend service definition. Our project is a monorepo, so we have a build context for our auth backend service that's defined in the auth backend directory, where we also have a Docker file. We are mapping port 3001 on the container to port 3001 on the host, so our auth service will be available at localhost 3001. In the Docker file for our auth backend service, we're going to do two things to keep our final image size down. We're going to use named build stages, and we're also going to use the node, uh, a node alpine base. Using an alpine or slim image as your base is often a great way to minimize the size of your final images. Things to keep in mind though when you work with alpine. Package availability and compatibility with other systems may be different from what you expect. Alpine uses the Musil library, while many other popular distros like Ubuntu use glibc. So, depending on your needs, that could complicate matters. There have also been differences in how these libraries handle DNS resolution, which can be potentially problematic in a Kubernetes environment, for example. Our base does have a Node.js recommended workaround, though. It uses a run instruction to add the libc6 compat package, which can address the missing shared library required for process DL open to work. You can check out the link here for more information. Next, we're going to set our working directory and copy our package JSON and lock files. When you copy your code, it's a really good idea to think about cache busting in your order of operations. For example, if you're copying over all of your project code, you want to make sure that you separate out your dependency requirements from your more generalized copy. This is to vo avoid a situation where your node modules would get rebuilt each time you updated your code base. Not ideal. Here, we're separating our dependency copies so that we can focus on installing our packages in this build stage. We'll worry about the rest of the code in the next stage. We can now install the packages specified in our lock file using the yarn CI script that we have outlined in our package JSON file. This script installs our dependencies with a series of flags like immutable to ensure that we only install what is specified in our lock file. Note that we are assuming that our project has a lock file, as in we have cloned or are working in an existing repository. We can now move on to building our final image. We copy over the artifacts that we need from our builder stage, including our dependency config and packages, and then the rest of the code. 
Next, we have a run instruction that changes the ownership of our working directory to our, the node user. Here, we're taking advantage of the fact that our Docker base has a node user that we can use to avoid running our container as root. In the same way that you would avoid running processes in a VM as root, it's a good idea to restrict privileges in a Dockerized environment by running processes as a non-root user where possible. Finally, we'll add our expose and CMD instructions. With the expose instruction, we indicate what port the application is listening on for connections. And our CMD instruction will specify the defaults we want to use to execute our container. In this case, we're using yarn start, one of the scripts that we specified in our package JSON file to start the express server. Next, let's talk a little bit about our client service. Again, we've got a Docker file in another directory in our mono repo, the client directory. Here, we're going to use a named volume called static build, which maps to our out directory. The out directory is the default location where Next.js exports the static build when using the next export command. We're going to map the static build in this out directory located relative to our app working directory in next app out to a, a named volume called static build. We'll then be able to mount our static build volume to our nginx container in the desired location. You'll notice that for this service, we're not mapping any ports. This is because we're not actually going to run a Next.js server. We're going to serve our site content using our nginx service instead. In the client Docker file, we're going to use the build stages pattern again to build the image for our client service. We also have a yarn CI command in this project, which does the same thing that it did in our off backend Docker file, ensuring that only the specified dependencies from our lock file get installed. I won't go into too much detail about the rest of the file since it's identical to the Docker file we used for our off backend service, but I do want to point out a couple of things here at the end. We have a run instruction to run the yarn build script from our package JSON file. This runs next build and next export to generate a static build and map the static HTML to the out directory. We do not have a final CMD instruction because we actually want the container to exit once the build has finished. Let's take a look now at the client application code and a couple of things that we can do to show users different content based on their signed in status. Client side, we have a hook that allows us to show a login and logout button on our homepage now based on whether or not the login cookie is present. The hook exposes a property, has user, and its value, which keeps track of whether or not the login cookie is present. Our hook also exposes a method that allows us to call our backend service using fetch to log in and log out. We also use the has pro user property in the space of our TSX to show user stories to logged in users on the homepage. So as you can see here, we're looking at the running application. So I've run docker compose upd from the root of the project. So my network has been created along with my containers and my named volume. My nginx service is now running and it's ready to serve the application content. So as you can see here, the application code is being served completely statically from nginx. You can also see how the user stories on the homepage are only shown to logged in users. And basically you could sub in any type of client side effect here that makes sense. So let's talk about some other things now that you could do with Nginx. As I mentioned earlier, Next.js API routes are not available when you do a, when to use when you do a, a Next. A static export the way that we're doing here. 
But we may still want to do things like direct traffic to certain pages based on something like a logged in status. For example, I may have a page of learning resources that I only want to display to users who are logged in with profiles. Obviously, there's a ton of other examples that you could also think of here. So if we look at our Nginx service now, we can inspect some of the salient points. The build context, like our other services, is a local directory called Nginx. And we're also using our named volume here, which is being mapped to the app public directory on the container. This means that our static Next.js content will be available in the app public directory on our Nginx container. We're also mapping port 80 on the container to port 8080 on the host. Our Nginx Docker file is pretty minimal, and you'll notice that we're relying on defaults for most things, including the default command used to execute the container. We don't really need to specify anything special to Nginx when it starts, we just want it running. We do specify one thing though, a copy instruction that copies our custom site config to the default config location on the container. Inside that config file, you'll notice that we're specifying the root to be the app public directory. This is the same directory that we have mapped to our static content volume. That mapping in our compose file, along with this setting in the nginx config, will ensure that our static content gets mapped to the directory that nginx will treat as the default location that it should serve content from. We also have a location block for our blog HTML file, our static content. Within that block, there is an if condition that tests whether or not our login cookie is set in the browser. If it is, then we're going to redirect users to the new learning content landing page instead of the default blog homepage. Here, they'll be able to access new content. You'll notice that we also have some rewrites here to make our redirects play within the scope of Next.js default routing conventions. Because our Nginx rewrites depend on page reloads, we can't actually use the JS-based static prefetching that we normally would within Next.js to get the behavior that we want. But the rest of our site navigation works as it normally would within Next.js static optimization protocols. For example, our post index page is prefetched from the blog and learning center homepages. The experience for the user should be a seamless transition between navigation modes. So here we can see um, the situation as it was before, the user is not logged in. Um, so they go to the blog homepage um, and then logged in, we see the user stories that we saw before, and then we're going to navigate to the blog homepage, which is now our learning center page. So we've got two effects here. We've got an Nginx based um, cookie based effect and a client side um, hook based effect. So um, all of that we're doing um, without running a node server, which is cool. Cool, so definitely check out the um, content for this uh, talk at this repo here. Please feel free to play around with it. Um, obviously, there's a ton of stuff that you could do, get creative, uh, you know, just wanted to show what was possible here. Also, strongly recommend checking out these examples in the Next.js examples repo um, that are about Docker specifically. They're definitely uh, points of inspiration for this talk. And there's a lot more that you could try out uh, with th those as well. Okay, everybody, thanks so much for listening. And I look forward to hearing questions and meeting some of you all at the talks. <laughs>